Hello, welcome to the Bakwas channel for self-paced tutorials on Internet of Things. This video demonstrates the installation and testing of a low-cost global positioning system device to receive data from the orbiting satellites. The data may be used locally or syndicated upstream to other applications in the local area network infrastructure. The objectives of this tutorial are threefold. First, install and run a budget-priced GPS module from uBlocks. Second, syndicate the processed data to a publish-subscribe message broker. And finally, third, add some environmental sensors to illustrate the use of a comprehensive monitoring solution. The project consists of the following key sections. Hardware, the electronic components in the project. Mechanical, the enclosure for the hardware. Software, the program to collect and publish the data. And finally, tests, the operations to confirm that the data is correct within the tolerances of the components. But for now, let us keep our objectives as modest as practical. The key components for the project are Arduino Uno Rev3, Arduino Ethernet Shield Rev2, Ublocks Neo-6M module, the optional components are LCD RGB backlight display, temperature and humidity sensor, light sensitive resistor. The mechanical consideration for the case is important for outdoor use of the solution. Connecting the GPS antenna with its short wire to the corresponding printed circuit board requires some thoughts on stable and rigid placement of the antenna inside a custom case. The minimal software for the project consists of Arduino Integrated Development Editor IDE, software libraries for GPS data, Ethernet, publish message queuing. The other libraries are required only if corresponding components are deployed. I squared C for the RGB LCD display one wire for the temperature and humidity sensor. The light-dependent resistor does not require any software library since the assigned analog pin is read directly for the current value of illuminance. libraries are wire for communication with I squared C devices, SPI for serial protocol interface, 
Ethernet for LAN communications. For desktop OS developers accustomed to the full TCP IP stack, Ethernet.maintain is your most friendly function that you need to call repeatedly for DHCP lease renewal. Software serial is desirable since it can support multiple serial ports. Tiny GPS Plus is an example library to process GPS raw data. There are many others that can be substituted. PubSub Client is an example library to queue messages to a broker for syndication. DHT is a highly recommended library by Rob Tullard. He has some other variations too. RGB underscore LCD is a vendor specific library for LCD display using I squared C. This slide is a simple reminder to myself of the long way we've come since my early introduction to real time data processing for ground triangulation purposes. Of course, prior to these experiences, I was engaged in real-time data processing with real-time operating systems that are, alas, no longer supported. In many ways, we have come full circle. I will publish a project in the near future on using LoRaWAN economically for similar purposes. The clarifying term is near future as time permits me to clear my backlog. The simple way to measure distance is to use the travel time for a signal whose speed is known. Of course, there are many simplifying assumptions even for this simple equation. We've all done this during our formative years in estimating the distance of a thunderclap where the travel time is guessed closely. Extending the principle to more distant objects the distance between a satellite that emits precise signals and a receiver, many diverse ones of course, can use a similar equation. Keep in mind that the satellite is moving and the receiver could be moving too. Unfortunately, this single distance value is unable to offer any location information about the receiver on the ground. If there are two satellites to provide distance information, then the distance, if collinear, can be estimated accurately by the equation on the slide given that the distances between the satellites are known accurately. However, we are still unable to derive a precise location on the ground for the receiver. This table illustrates the number of satellites needed to obtain the ground location of the receiver accurately. In the interest of keeping this presentation simple, only summary information has been presented here. It is recommended strongly to browse the uBlocks handbook on GPS for very detailed information on why and how four satellites are needed to determine the geographical location of the receiver. The book by Jean-Marie Zorg is definitely the most comprehensive documentation on GPS that I have encountered all these years. Many thanks to Jean-Marie and to uBlocks for the publication. The book may contain more information than you will ever want to know, but the fundamental illustrations on geographic triangulation and the explanations on accuracy, diminution or dilution of precision a very valuable reading. Here is the schematic diagram of the demonstration project. It is extremely important to note that the transmit pin on the GPS module is connected to the chosen receive pin on the Arduino Uno. Similarly, the receive pin on the GPS module is connected to the transmit pin on the Arduino Uno. Another note of caution is that with this specific NEO-6M module, I had to use 9600 baud to process the data correctly. 
there are several different minor variations in the NEO-6M module. These variations have to do with the manufacturing of the accompanying printed circuit board. The NEO-6M module is obsolete. You can use the NEO-8M module in its place. The added advantage is that this newer module will receive data from Russian GLONASS satellites too. This slide is simply to illustrate the basic assembly connections. Exact models of the components shown on this slide were not used in the project. The illustration was retained simply because these components were readily available in the Fritzing library and are pin compatible with the components used actually in the project. Also, the DHT22 may be a better sensor than the DHT11 shown on the slide. The light sensitive sensor provides a single reading of the analog pin. There may be a need to collect illuminance, infrared, and ultraviolet data too with other sensors. This slide illustrates the basic format of data from the satellites to the GPS module. The dollar character is start of record marker. GP is the satellite system identifier. ZDA is the record type identifier. The comma separated values after the record keyword are different based on the type of record. Please consult the handbook for further information. Some of the more common data records are shown on the slide. The GPS library chosen to process the data may provide convenient access to the data fields. This slide enumerates the basic time systems relevant for the processing of GPS data. The accuracy of GPS data is specified using dilution of precision values. The several different types of dilution of precision for the data are listed on the slide. GPS data is susceptible to jamming. Some of the common techniques are listed on the slide. The following data are not tested owing to the limited scope of the tutorial. Mobility tracking and data from other navigational satellites such as GLONASS for Russia, Galileo for European Union, Baidu for China, Quasi Zenith for Japan, and Navic for India.
the development of the code followed the principles of stepwise refinement. The tests move sequentially through the bulleted list of tests below. Display data in serial monitor window. Collect environmental data. Display abbreviated data on RGB LCD display. Publish messages to MQTT broker. Subscribe to messages from another computer through the broker in the LAN. There are eight fields in the LCD display, UTC, temperature in degrees Celsius, percentage relative humidity, light index on a scale from 0 to 7, number of satellites currently visible, horizontal dilution of precision, location dilution of precision, geographic dilution of precision, time age. This video tutorial was a very simple introduction to using a low-cost but effective GPS module with some additional sensors for environment data. The basic underlying technologies used in the solution were global positioning system, local area network, queued messages for publishing.
This presentation was prepared with assistance on special effects from Sufi Isma at Gmail. The documentation resources for GPS from UBlox, especially the handbook by Jean-Marie Zog, a special mention of the different DHT libraries by Rob Tillard and his unhesitating technical support. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the free open source software from Fritzing for assembly diagrams and schematics, Inkscape for artwork preparation, LibreOffice for documentation, OBS Studio for recordings, Caden Live for nonlinear editing, and of course, Ubuntu for the platform services. The music is from the YouTube library. It is called Early Avril by Unicorn Heads. Also to my family, my teachers, colleagues, and subscribers, a simple thank you is wholly inadequate for the journey through the years. Nevertheless, thank you again to everyone on this list for the encouragement, support, and understanding to help me to continue doing what I like doing, that is, to assist in a small way to make more productive use of computer technologies. That's all, folks. Thanks for taking the time to view this presentation. Would love to hear from you with your feedback. You are always welcome to be critical in any which way you can. Until next time, bye for now.